Good morning. Welcome to our service. This is a whole new day and this is a whole new service. Father, we come to your throne in Jesus' name. Thank you for your goodness, Lord, and for your mercy. We invite you into this service, Lord, and we ask that your name would be glorified. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in my sight. O oh Lord, my God, my rock, my strength, and my redeemer. Amen and amen. We are starting a brand new day. We've got a new administration. And we've got new beginnings. One of our volunteers that used to work here at the mission uh, had a new baby on the first day, the 21st, of the new beginning. And so there's a great rejoicing. And that's the Easter. That would be Tammy Easter's granddaughter. She was born. Her name was Emery Hope. And I thought, isn't that a great name, Hope? Because hope maketh not ashamed. That's the thing. We must have hope to keep us going on and to keep us encouraged. If you would... Turn with me to Psalm 95. We're going to talk about worship today for just a few minutes. And a lot of times you'll hear people say, well, worship is uh, slow songs and praise is fast songs. So if it's, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving, that's praise. And then, holy, holy, that that's worship. And there may be an element of truth there, but worship is more than just a slow song. It crosses over into our life. And we're going to look at some verses that show us this. So uh, Psalm 95, verse 6. And this was this is what it says. There's actually a song. Um, I believe Maranatha first recorded it uh, back maybe in the 70s or 80s. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Verse 7. For he is our God, and we are the sheep of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Let's see, did, no, I read that wrong. We are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their heart. And they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. So he starts by bringing the positive and kind of ends that particular psalm on a more negative note. But what he is saying is, oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. And then uh, the next verse that goes so well with it is right across the page, 96, verse 9. Actually, starting with, um, <laughs> let me do all of 96. It's so great you want to hear all of this. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen. <clears throat> Excuse me. His wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Given to the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Given to the Lord glory and strength. Given to the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Now this is not talking about a monetary offering, although it might include that too. It's talking about the offering of praise. In the New Testament, it says the evening sacrifice, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. That is the offering. It goes on to say in verse 9, O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar, and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful, and all that is therein. 
Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his tree. Amen. What a word of encouragement for us to rejoice in the Lord, for us to worship the Lord, because everything that there is, every good thing, he has made it and he's made it for us. Psalm 99 9. There is a lady named uh, Glenda Jackson. She says every time you see a nine it, in the scripture, it will indicate a work of the Holy Spirit. Listen to this particular psalm. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. We don't worship him necessarily for all of the good things he's given us, although he has given us so much. We worship Him because He is good. He is worthy of our praise. Yes. He is worthy of our worship. Let God arise and His enemies be scattered. As we praise Him, and one of the songs we sing and we quote often is, Let the high praises of God be in my mouth and the two-edged sword in my hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and the judgment written upon kings and nobles. This tells us that praise, high praise, and worship wherever they interconnect is a very powerful spiritual warfare tool that we need to use praise as a way of entering into His presence. And if we cannot be in praise, then we have left off to be in the Spirit. We need to live and walk in the Spirit. Yes. If we get grumbly, if we get murmuring, if we get stressed out, that becomes walking in the flesh. And we need to just call time out and get back into that place where the presence of the Lord is flowing through us. And the best thing to do and the best way to do that is by just stopping and going to the Lord in prayer. Prayer is our most powerful uh, means of uh, victory over all of the things that would uh, try to bring us down in this world. Prayer is our victory. Right. The, the Word tells us that faith is the victory that overcomes the world, and it is. And that prayer of faith is the way that we get it. We, and it's so important to have a time to get on your knees and pray before the Lord and ask Him for divine intervention in whatever is going on in your life. You will be amazed. Sometimes He will not just change the situation, but He will change something in you. And this is very wonderful when God changes something in us because He's perfecting us and He's causing us to bear His image. He's causing us to look like Himself. And that's His objective in the human race. That's his objective in filling us with the Holy Spirit to make us look like himself. Okay, the next one is Romans 12.1. You probably have this memorized. It's hot pink if you have a bookmark. I, I don't think I gave you colors, did I? Uh, it, this is what it says in King James. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, the um, Amplified says, that same verse, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. So we see that worship isn't just a song that we sing, but it's actually dedicating our hearts and lives unto Him. Body, soul, mind, and spirit. We should be get every day laying down another area and continually laying the things because we know that without Him we can do nothing. We can do no work. Uh, we cannot worship without His Spirit. We cannot do anything good without Him. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. And we need to get that and we need to memorize it and realize that when we try to say, okay, Lord, you saved me, I'll take it from here, that that is erroneous. That's wrong. We cannot take it from here. We cannot help Him. But what we can do is call on Him always to fill us with His Spirit. That that as He is, so are we in this Amen. world. That we will shine as lights. We will shine the very glory of God in our generation to any and all who will receive it. To any and all who will be a, a partaker or, or to receive that at any level, really. So this is our job, is to allow Him. 
Without him, I can do nothing. Without him, I'd surely fail. Without him, I could go nowhere like a ship without a sail. But I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So see, there's two sides to that coin. And both of them lead us right back to the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is how it renders in Young's literal hey, translation. knock it off. I call upon you, brethren. This is still Romans 12. Stop, stop Through it. the compassions of God to present your bodies a sacrifice, living, sanctified, acceptable to God which is your reasonable service. So once again, that is reflecting the idea that it's our service of worship, that we can uh, be filled with God's Holy Spirit, and that is our reasonable service of worship. That's what he's looking for. And so then when we sing the songs of worship and praise, God can inhabit the praises of his people because it's coming from a heart that's surrendered to him. But it... But without it, I can remember whenever uh, the kids listened to a, 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 it was probably a cassette tape back in the 70s, Salty, the singing songbook. This was a Maranatha Ministries. And Salty taught the children, if it doesn't come from your heart, then it's not praise. I can still hear him. I have no idea who the narrator of that was. But he taught wonderful, wonderful songs for the kids. And there were some wonderful um, pertinent teachings for everyday life, even right now. If it's not praise, if it doesn't come from our hearts, then it's not praise. If we're just mouthing words, yeah, yeah, bless the Lord, oh my soul. If that doesn't come from your heart, that's just words that are empty. But if it comes from the heart, it be, and if it comes from a life that is surrendered to Him, then that's our reasonable service of worship. Amen. That we give ourselves to Him continually. That we present our bodies a living sacrifice. We present our hearts, body, soul, mind, and spirit. We present ourselves before Him Amen. as a living sacrifice. And He receives that. In the Old Testament, whenever the sacrifice was placed upon the altar and the Lord received it, the fire from heaven would consume it. That that meant that God received the sacrifice. Amen. And so we still got that. You know, today is a rainy day, and I heard Franklin Graham speaking at the inauguration, and he said, in the scripture, rain is a sign for blessing. We, we used to sing a song, it's beginning to rain, hear the voice of the fathers, whosoever will, let him drink of these waters. For I uh, uh, promised you, uh, I don't remember the rest of it, but it's... Uh, I forgot the rest of the song anyway. The point is is that the rain is a symbol for the blessings of the Lord. And I love the scripture that says, The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. And in conclusion, the very last one I have is the Till bookmark. James chapter 4, verse 7. You know this by heart. Those of you that listen to me on a regular basis know this verse. And this is what it says. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Verse 8. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So he's telling us to repent of our sins. When there is something, and ask the Lord, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be some wicked way. And if there is something that needs to be addressed... I promise you the Holy Spirit will answer that prayer and He will come and bear witness to you of what you need to turn from and what you need to uh, take out of your life, what you need to repent from and have no more to do with it. The Scripture tells us to have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness. There's a lot of things we may have been raised to think that something's okay when it really is not. But God will bear witness to that to us and let us know if there's something that we need to repent from. And the beauty of this is before we can resist the devil effectively, we must first submit ourselves to God. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. How? In this reasonable service of worship that we're talking about in Romans 12. That reasonable service of worship is just to say every day, Lord, I belong to you. You alone can keep me from all sin, and he will. You do not, I've heard people say, I sin every day. That ought not to be a Christian's testimony that they sin every day because He is able to keep us from all sin. Christ in us is the hope of glory. And when He is living in us and through us, we do not have to worry about sinning every day. When we do sin, the Scripture says, if we confess our sins, He's willing and just to, con uh, to 
forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So it's when we sin, but not that we have to sin every day. It should be the exception, and it should get more and more rare. As we walk with the Lord, our life should be more and more uh, conformed to His will, and His Spirit should be manifested in us so that our life is no longer our own, but it is Christ in us, that hope of glory. And so as we submit ourselves, therefore, to God and resist the devil, he must flee. A lot of people raise the volume to rebuke the devil because they feel a temptation for this or a temptation for that. It's like, no, devil, you're not going to make me sin. You're not going to make me sin. Well, what they need to do, first and foremost, is get down on their knees. We all need to get down on our knees and and submit ourselves to God because it's most important to be in prayer. And we don't need to be talking to the enemy all the time. It should be rare occasions. But, you know, some people talk to the enemy more than they talk to the Lord. And it ought not to be that way. It ought to be that we are speaking to the Lord and praying to the Lord and submitting our hearts and lives to the Lord. And then when the enemy comes in like a flood, what does it say? He will lift up a standard against him. That's good news. There is victory in the camp of the Lord and there's victory for us. That's all I have today. I've gotten a lot of requests for these sermonettes to continue. And so I will be posting one on a regular basis. I think we're going to get another building. But for now, I'll just come and share with you uh, from time to time. It may not be every Sunday, but we'll be here. Let us conclude our service.